So in this particular video, we're gonna get up and running super fast with NAN, which is a fantastic open source workflow automation tool. Now we can get that self-hosted for free using services that is provided by Render. This is gonna allow us to deploy NAN into the cloud. That's only one part of it because we're also in this particular video gonna set up Superbase, a Superbase project, should I say, that technically is gonna provide kind of all of the kind of the backend support that NAN needs. For example, we're gonna to need to install data to somewhere or configuration for NA10 and that's what Superbase is going to do for us. So without further ado, let's get into the video and let's get cracking. Okay, so the first step on this journey is to create a free account at render.com. Please head over and do that. I'm just gonna go into the dashboard. You should be in the dashboard yourself once you've got your account created. You can see here, I've already got some services already deployed. You can see I've already got NAN, but we're gonna create a brand new service for this particular video. So up the top there, hit on the new. We're gonna go to web service, and then we're gonna choose existing image. Now I'm just gonna pop in here a image URL, which is gonna kind of allow us to pull down the NAN image into render itself. Now head over to the Docker website because all of the details are there, but um, I've kind of got it there. And of course the link is in the description as well. Now once you've gone that, you, you've got that all in place, then just hit the connect. Now it's gonna allow us to now to key in some details here. So for example, I'm just gonna call this one N8N tutorial. You can see here I've got Frankfurt, which is EU central. Of course, I'm located in the EU. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make sure that I set up a Frank Frankfurt here and when I install Superbase, I'm gonna make sure that that is also in Frankfurt as well, because it just means that if you keep the services kind of in the same region, then it would kind of maybe save any kind of latency issues or anything like that you might have with the two services are kind of talking together. Now, the great thing about Render, of course, is you can choose a free for hobby projects. Now that's great. Now there's some limitations to using free in terms of kind of its, its sort of availability. It just might mean you need to ping a little bit or use it a little bit to kind of keep the services online. Any period of inactivity, it means that NAM will kind of go to sleep and it will take a while for the service to wake up when it gets its next request. So there's different sort of usages and other restrictions that you have within using Render. So please do go and check it out. But in terms of what we would like to do, and even if you're evaluating NAN to see if it's a tool for you, then this is a fantastic option for you to do. So once we kind of go all of that, we can scroll down. When we now need to create some environment variables. Now these are gonna be quite important. And this is a bit of a two-step process in this particular video. So we're gonna, I'm gonna kind of pre-fill all of the environment variables that um, I need in order to get ourselves up and running. And I'm gonna show you then once we're into Superbase, where we kind of get all of those details that we also need to include in here as well. So I'm just gonna quickly add all of the environment variables in, and then we'll just quickly walk through them. Okay, so I've keyed in 10 current environment variables. This is technically the configuration that we need for our NAN instance. Now, there is gonna be one more that we're gonna add in a little bit later, but that's what we've got so far. What I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna key in the ones that are important, certainly the values, the ones that's important that we can do right off the bat here. And then we're gonna to need to then go and get some Superbase configuration to put in here once we've created our Superbase project. And also as well, there's one other little bit that we need to generate here, and that is an NAN encryption key. So let's fill in the one ones that I know that we can key in at this particular point. So the top here, what I'm just gonna do is I'm just gonna type in Postgres like that. Now for our schema, if I just select that, we know that this is gonna be public. And then in our DB type, this is gonna be Postgres DB like that. Now in our generic time zone, now what I'm gonna do is I'm based in Europe. So I'm just gonna type in a Europe and I'm just gonna do a London here like that. But of course, if you're in the States, you could put kind of um, uh, like America, sort of uh, New York or something like that. Um, but just do a Google for the time zones and the format of the time zones that you need for your own particular region. Now what I'm gonna do, is I'm just gonna copy this and I'm gonna also put this into the time zone there as well. So they're all set up. So they're all the key ones that we've got set up. Let's now head over to uh, Superbase and let's set up our Superbase project and then we'll come back over here and then we'll key in the values for our project. Okay, so next up, we need to create a, an account over at superbase.com. But of course, if you've already got a, an account, then head over to the dashboard. That's what I'm gonna do here, just choose dashboard. I'm gonna create a brand new project, just choose new. I'm gonna choose the organization. I've got a training organization set up. Let's give the project a name. You can see here I've got N8N. Uh, so there we go, N8N tutorial. Let's generate a password. Now, the key thing to do here is make sure that you copy 
the uh, password to the clipboard because you're going to need that very, very soon. Now with the region, we're going to keep that as central EU. As I said before, keeping the kind of the regions of our services uh, as close together as I possibly can, it's well worth doing that. Hit the create new project. That's going to go away, do its thing. Once it's set up, we'll come back and then we'll check out the details and make sure that we are good to go. Okay, so my project's all created. I'm gonna move over to the project settings here, go to database, and then these are the details that we're gonna need. Now, I've just in the clipboard copied my password, so I'm just gonna head back over to the environment variables. I'm gonna find my password, let's go there. Let's just paste that in there like that. Let's head back over to Superbase. Now, let's grab the host, let's copy that. Let's move back over here. Let's find the host, let's just paste that in there. Now, we're gonna need uh, the port, so let's just head up. Oh, just head that back over to Subbase. Got your port there is 6543. Just head there. Just paste that in there. And of course, we've got the Postgres user. Let's just pop over here. There's the user. Copy that there. Let's go back. Let's just paste that in there. And then we're just left with this encryption key. So that's kind of our work with inside Superbase done for the moment. Let's head over to another website now where we're going to quickly generate a quick NAN encryption key. And let's do that now. Okay, so check the link in the description that that contains a link to this particular website. Now we're going to generate a random encryption key here. And of course, you just hit the generate here and all of the values below just kind of generate. We're just going to grab an encryption key. So we're going to copy that. Now this is going to be needed because of course, we're inside our Superbase database. We're going to kind of want to make sure we encrypt all the data. NAN needs to encrypt the data that is held with inside our database. So we can just generate here an encryption key. We can now pop back over to our environment variables and we can just paste that encryption key just in there. Now that's pretty well much all of our environment variables all set up. I think we are now good to go. So we can now say deploy web service. Now that's going to take a few moments to deploy the service itself. You can see here that we're now into this particular kind of log view here. And this is just kind of tailing the log as the service is currently being deployed uh, with inside the render platform. So I'm going to leave that to play out for a little bit and then we'll come back in just a moment. Okay, so that took a good few minutes to deploy, but once you're up and running, what I suggest you do is you look for the kind of the live indicator. You might need to still wait a minute or two when you see that live indicator because the services could well be coming up. So now I've got that, we've got a link up here that we can now click on. So I'm just going to choose this particular link. This is going to take me off to that particular website and then hopefully I can create my admin account on NAN. Okay, so I've keyed all of my details in this particular screen. Let's hit next. This is going to be kind of the admin account in to gain access to NAN. So it's going to take a moment to do its thing. Let's just get rid of that there. And uh, I'm not going to worry about the here customizing this to me, just going to say get started. Okay, so here we are up and running with inside NAN. Now, before we create any workflows, what we're going to need to do is we need to go back to render and set an environment variable before we can sort of fully use this particular tool. That's the webhook URL. That's going to be needed because it's going to be a piece of, it's going to be a piece of configuration they need to apply to NAN that's going to allow us to publicly access our endpoints from the domain that's being generated as part of the render.com uh, deployment. So let's now head back over to uh, render and get that environment variable set up. So back on our dashboard, let's copy this particular URL to copy that to clipboard, move to the uh, environment. Let's just move down here. Let's create a brand new environment variable. This is going to be webhook underscore URL. And we're just going to paste the value in there that we just copied. So just hit save changes. Now what's going to happen now is that our NAN instance is going to be instantly kind of redeployed because we've kind of just, we, we just kind of updated the configurations. So if I just go back to the logs, you'll see here that the service is currently starting. So we just need to wait that, uh, wait for that just to start and then we can go back into NAN and then we'll be good to carry on. Okay, so back in NAN, I've just done a refresh. I'm all signed in and let's create a brand new workflow just to kind of make sure things are working okay for us. So I'm just gonna call this one, I don't know, ping service, something like that. And uh, let's delete this particular node. We don't want that. Let's add our first one in. So let's just go to the on webhook call here. So it's be kind of just like almost calling like an API endpoint. Now I'm just gonna change the, change the respond here to then using the response to the web, webhook node. And we're just gonna create that in just a moment. So this is just going to be a get request into this particular URL here. Now, this is the test URL where you've got the production URL. So we're just going to use the uh, test URL. So just go back to the canvas now. Let's create another node here. Let's just type in response and just choose the response to webhook. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to change respond with to JSON. 
So just change this to a status and available, such as like a JSON response is going to come back. That's fine. Let's just go back here. So we should just be good just to test this now. So I'll just go to test workflow. Now what's going to happen is I'm going to wait for a trigger event. I can just double click on this here and I can just copy this particular URL into a new tab. Let's just head over to new, new tab. Okay, just pasted that URL into the Google Chrome kind of URL bar, hit enter, and I've got a status of available has come back. So just head back over to NAN now. Let's see where it is. There it is. If I just come back out of that, you should see everything is green. So we've successfully, of course, called our API endpoint. And of course, once I'm happy with that, if I wanted to ping that into the, uh, uh, or push that into the into public domain, I could just go to inactive up there. And that is now, now live. And of course, I can just double click on this here and you can see I can click on production URL. And this is the production URL, which I can now invoke via any other no-code tool um, or however you want to use it. And of course, that will then be activated. So we are good to go. We've got NAN all nicely set up. Um, just a couple of little bits just to point out. Let's head back over to render. Okay, so periodically NAN will be updated to a later, a more newer version, typically maybe bug fixes or new features enhancements. So it's really important that you don't fall behind too much in terms of kind of keeping your NAN application updated. So how do you change it? Well, I know at the time of recording, we're currently running version 150.1, but I do know that there is a, a 1.5, 1.0 available. And I kind of I discovered that with inside NAN itself, down in the bottom left-hand corner, it'll kind of tell you about these new versions that you kind of have released. So I'm just going to quickly make a change and bring my version of NAN um, up to date. So I'm going to go to settings here. I'm going to move down here. I'm going to edit the deploy option here. And I'm just, instead of it saying latest, okay, I'm just going to change this to 1.51.0. Okay, so there we go. So it's gone away. It's it's said that it's uh, the public image is accessible. So of course I can now save the changes. And what's going to happen now is my NA instance is going to now be redeployed and be updated with that new particular version. Of course, if there's any kind of like sort of database updates, as long as you kind of keep NAN pretty well much in tow in terms of don't leave it too long before you do the updates, then hopefully NAN will do the kind of any data migrations that it needs to do kind of behind the scenes. It's always important, though, that you look at uh, kind of backing uh, your workflows up and things like that. There's different sort of techniques out on the web there in order to back up your workflows from NAN, just in case there's any particular issues. So it's well worth doing that on a periodic basis. But for now, I'm going to leave this to kind of fire up. And then what will happen is, is I'll just go back into NAN. It will tell me that there's no further updates that's required, and then I will be running the latest version. Okay, so over at NAN, before I do a refresh, you'll see down here on the bottom left hand corner, you see this one update and you see this is the, the 1.51 that it was talking about. It was released three hours ago. So what I can just do now is just do a refresh of this particular page, just do a reload. And you'll now should find that once that does a reload, you'll find that that little indicator down the bottom left hand corner should have disappeared once it kind of comes back. There it is, just loading everything up. There it is, all gone. So that's it, we're good, we're up and running with NAN and you're now ready to explore kind of more about NAN. Now, just one point of note here, actually, this is, a bit, I just wanna kind of point this out. On the NAN YouTube channel, they've got a really, really good comprehensive kind of like nine part beginners series for NAN. It's definitely well worth checking out. He's done a great job at putting the kind of the detail together for that particular course. So please do head over and have a look. I'll put the link in the, in the description of the playlist. Um, but it's definitely well worth checking out. So of course, hope you enjoyed that. And please do subscribe to the channel if you like these kind of videos. And please do come become a member of the Digital Pros No Code Academy as well. Lots of no code information there for you to kind of get stuck into. And of course, if you want a written article version of this particular walkthrough, it's in the Academy as well. So until the next video, I'll see you soon.